Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and thank you very much for joining me today. Um, it's been a very, very long time since I live streamed and I'm not even sure if I can remember how it all works, but uh, we'll just see how we go. Uh, just uh, let me know if my uh, uh, video and audio are all fine. The uh, audio side, I've been tampering with the audio stuff because I've been filming things for my YouTube channel and uh, yeah, things, got, uh, things have been unplugged and plugged in and all sorts of things changing, so... Uh, hello to GT, hello to Jay, hello to Thomas Armstrong, Steve is here, uh, Scarlet the Four-Eyed Cooter, hello, uh, One Bit Fever Dreams, Thomas Armstrong, I already said Thomas Armstrong, no I didn't, yes I did, uh oh, um, what else, Frank S, Ryan Design, Inkscrewe, um, Inkscrewe, Inkscrewe, DJ Craze, um, yeah, did I miss anyone? Did I miss anyone? Jeremy's Vintage Hillbilly Shake, hello there. Uh, you did, I did good, I'm glad, okay. Thomas deserves two mentions anyway, so. Sorcerer Stan, hello. I just reached down to uh, touch my leg and uh, realized that um, it's bleeding, so uh, without wanting to make this a terribly gruesome live stream, I'm going to just uh, apply some first aid to whatever has happened. Ugh, that's. I think it's, I think I've kind of nicked my leg or something like that. And one of the things that happens when you get old is when you bleed, you just keep bleeding. I am old, by the way. I turned 50 the other day. Can you believe that? 50. 5 0. <sighs> old fart. Uh, okay, so. Um, got a couple of things to sort out, I suppose. A bit of housekeeping here. Uh, things are just a mess for me at the moment. I have just been so busy, so much stuff going on. Christmas is coming up, which makes me even busier because there a lot of people tend to send me stuff to do around Christmas time, you know, like projects for my main job. And then of course, I'm also doing stuff with the YouTube channel, other things, you know, I'm uh, doing um, the uh, various other projects to, just to release on my channel because at the end of the day, these live streams are fun and I get a bit of repair work done and all that, but you know, when it comes to the real, the stuff that really gets me the subs and really gets me the viewers, it's the other stuff. It's things like the ultrasonic cleaning, the soldering videos, those sorts of things. So I am working on an ultrasonic cleaner project at the moment. I've made some very significant headway with that yesterday uh, and filmed it all, of course. And, uh, and so I'm going to be continuing working on that. And I'm really looking forward to getting that video out, but it could be quite a while before that one happens. Uh, Sorcerer Stan, hello. Cheshire Noir, hello. Um, I turned 51 this weekend. Well, how about that? Happy birthday. Um, uh, um, so, um, yeah, so anyhow, be very busy. And then, of course, the other thing, really important thing for people who haven't done it, uh, Startup Disc is full. It's the second, it's the other show that I am um, working with Jay and Dana on. Uh, it is a tech chat. Um, fairly, you know, broad range of uh, topics. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, please have a look. I should put a link for that, shouldn't I? Uh, a more prepared person would have a link for the channel. Justin is here. Hello, Justin. Um, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. YouTube. My cordless keyboard isn't very cordless at the moment because the battery ran out. Start up, start up, disc is full. Now I know what you're thinking, what a silly name for a YouTube show. There is logic to it. The idea is it's meant to be symbolic of our brains being full of information. So, you know, start up disc is full. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you hear it, you hear it. All right, so I'm gonna put a link in the description, just dropping it in now. I mean, not in the description, in the uh, chat, boom. There it is. Just drop that on you. So if you get a chance, have a look at it. Subscribe. We've got a new episode coming out either later today or tomorrow. Probably tomorrow in US time by the time I get uh, finished with it. I'm editing at the moment. I uh, recorded it yesterday uh, and it is about working from home, the next episode. So tech stuff to do with working from home. Um, so yes, uh, working on that as well. Um, the repair side of things at the moment is, is getting a little bit hectic because I've done all the easy ones. 
and all that really remains now are all the really problematic repairs. And so they are hard for me to live stream because I'm having to concentrate. It makes it difficult for me to just chat. Um, so anyhow, well, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. So I've got this um, board that I had just Dove a day. I was working on it Dove a day. And it's a, um, what do you call this thing? 475, quarter 605, whatever you want to call it. And this came with a little heat sink on it, but whatever was sticking the heat sink down came unsticked. So what I'd done is I grabbed some of this stuff, which is adhesive um, thermal transfer crap. So I'm gonna put this here, I'm gonna cut it to size, and then, oh, by the way, this is an SE30 logic board. We'll have a look at that in a moment. So I'm gonna put this down here and hopefully cut it to size. It wants to slip around. Oh, jeez. It really wants to slip around. Yeah. Stay still, you thing. Okay. There's one cut. And I think I'd be better off doing this just by hand, you know. There we go. Okay. Here's our little bit of thermally transfery stuff. So this is basically just like a thermal pad sort of thing. What do you, whatever you call that stuff? But it's adhesive, so I can stick it on here and it will hold the thing in place. And order will be restored restored to the planet there we go let's just trim that off there a bit trimmeroony great stuff and then we'll pop this on here so this board has been recapped repaired it's all ready to go uh just needs oh actually was this the one someone asked me to overclock something recently i have to check that it's in my notes somewhere there we go might have been this it's probably this I think someone asked me to read you there's a bunch of little resistors here and these little resistors set the clock speed so you just shuffle them around a little bit and then you can uh, adjust the speed and this is a, some of my customers are absolutely adamant that i do not mess with that it's like you know no don't adjust the clock speed and then other people are just like yeah do it as fast as it can go so different strokes for different folks my guess uh, there is gluey stuff that you can use, but I didn't like it. It was very yucky. This was just easy. This is just easy. Um, use bubble gum. Yeah, I, I, ages ago I wanted to try and start a rumor that thermal paste and um, uh, and solder paste were actually the same thing, just in a different with a different label on them. But I thought, no, it's a bit mean. Some poor bastard will probably get stuffed up if I. Yeah. So um, he'll. Okay, just checking the chat here, make sure nothing interesting has happened. No, it's all good, all good, so, yep. All right, so this is a Macintosh SE30. The, the customer has said that this sometimes doesn't power on, and that's fairly typical of a problematic power supply, so I thought I'd open it up and have a look. Not even sure if I have all the caps to fix it, but we can always just have a look and see how it looks and, and look. I'm saying, saying look a lot, aren't I? Uh, now, for this one, we need a screwdriver, and I think it's a smaller... Yeah, it is. Okay, so let's undo that. One of the things I really like about the SE30 and the SE for that matter is this power supply ultimately. Um, the fact that it is kind of like this power supply that will adapt to whatever input voltage. So you can run it off 110, 120, 220, 230, 240. Um, it's great. And then of course the fact that they brought out the SE, SE30 and then regressed back into the stupid power supply in the classic, um, always upset me. I mean, not to the point where I'm in tears or anything like that, but still upset me. Um, Trina's here, hello Trina. Uh, Gidoki. Mm. So, let's whip this off, have a quick look. I'm setting myself up here so that I Will not be able to leave if I need to. Um, I'm trapping myself with hardware. Eh, stay there. Oh, it worked, balanced. Uh, right, now I really should get a little container and put these screws in it because if I don't, they're gonna get lost. That's what, what? 
did a repair the other day and uh, there's a screw left over. I'm sure that happens to the best of us. All right, so I'm just going to use these. I don't know what that is. Oh, actually, I do know what that is. Um, some Mac goodies tomorrow. I'll post my first short on my channel about it. Excellent. I've been thinking about doing a short myself and I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I, um, so a couple of things that have happened. I should actually just mention these, these couple of things that have happened. So one of the first things that happened is I've got a new camera. So a new video camera. It, you won't notice any real difference today. It's this view here. Hello there, hello new camera, hello. Um, this is the camera that, that I just used to, for this side view. And as you can see at the moment, it looks a little bit flat and dull and stuff like that. That's just because of the way I haven't done any adjustments. Let me just improve the camera a little bit. Yeah, but anyhow, so new camera, yay, messy table. Um, it's a uh, Canon XA50, uh, 4K, um, sort of entry level professional camera. Very happy with it. Um, and you'll see stuff recorded with it in my uh, uh, future uh, YouTube videos. And I've, of course, been spending a lot of time with that, setting things up for that. And another thing that I got recently, which I'm, I'm planning to do a YouTube short about, is I got a, uh, an old camera. So my very first digital camera that I bought in 1999, for around about 2,000 Australian dollars, was a Canon, no, not Canon, sorry, Kodak DC265 digital camera uh, with a full 1.5 megapixel resolution. Uh, and anyhow, um, I had that and it stopped working. I loaned it to someone because I didn't need it anymore and they didn't have a digital camera, so I loaned it to them. And they got a lot of use from it as well, so it's a well-used camera. And then one day it stopped working. Uh, and so anyhow, I said, look, just send it back to me. I might be able to repair it. By this, this stage, they got themselves their own digital camera, so they didn't need it back. And um, yeah, I went to go try and repair it recently and I broke it. I mean, I fully broke it. It just completely broke it. I really destroyed the thing. And um, anyhow, uh, I was a little bit, you know, you know I, like to, I like to reminisce. I don't like having things that I used to own that don't work, you know. So I did a little eBay purchase from someone selling one in the States as untested, paid like next to nothing. Like it was something like 50 bucks delivered, something like that. It was super cheap. And um, it arrived and it works beautifully. So I'm very, very happy that I now have a Kodak DC265 again. Uh, and for those who may or may not know that range of cameras, the Kodak DC60, 265 and the 290, you may or may not know, but they have a little um, CPU inside them, quite a capable little CPU, and you can actually set up that camera to play Doom on it. Little screen on the back, you use the left and right controls for the menu and stuff, and you can just press buttons for shoot and that. And so yeah, you can play Doom on the back of a digital camera, and I just think that is like one of the coolest things, a bar. Um, and so I, I have that now, again. I had it before, but I have it again now. Um, and it's working and all that. Hey, we got it off. Thank you. I did a short and it was not entirely successful. Gauge success. What do you call success when it comes to a short? I'm not sure. I'm not sure you can really. Well, how, how do you consider it successful? Do exclusively shorts on chickens. Yeah, I could. Shall we say hello to the chickens? Hello, chickens. Oh, geez, look at the mesh. The mesh is in front of the camera. Better sort that out. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Okay, let's get this mesh fixed. Can't be having a meshy view of the chickens. No, sir. Hey, better? There we go. Okay. Average view duration, 77% of 59 seconds. <laughs> 11 views, oh dear, yeah. Well, I don't know. Do they promise anything when it comes to those? I don't even know this power supply. I've never worked on one of these before. Oh, yes, I have. Sorry, you can calm down now. 
I just freaked myself out there for a minute. I panicked. Ah! Oh, I hate these things. These grommety things. Oh, come on, you asshole. Oh, son of a gun. It's coming. It's coming. No, it's not. <sighs> okay. The, I guess the thing with YouTube Shorts, it, it is really just YouTube trying to get in on the TikTok success, isn't it? Really? I mean, is, does anyone think it's anything more than that? Don't be like this. Hey, you got it. Sort of. Hey, you got it. Sort of. Oh my God, what is, what, what, what? Thank you. Not happy, Jan. So, <coughs> sorry, that was a reference to a, a very, uh, an Australian TV commercial, which if you're not Australian, you'll have no idea what not happy Jan means, but never mind. Um, there are a few things, uh, now there are a few sort of TV commercials, Australian TV commercials that have kind of become part of our vernacular over here. There's things like keeping the rabbits out. Um, and not happy Jan, that sort of thing. Now this hasn't been switched on, so I can sort of touch things with impunity. I don't need to worry about getting zapped because this has been off for a very, very lengthy time. I don't expect any uh, capacitors to have any sort of charge left in them. So uh, if you had powered this on recently, you would want to be fairly careful uh, working with this power supply, um, especially around some of these big fatties here, these big, big, big fatties. Oh, balls. Come on. Does anyone here hate working on power supplies? Raise your hand if you hate working on power supplies. I know some people, it's just their, they love it. Like power supplies, yeah. It's Nirvana, but not for me. Especially when they don't want to come out of their case. Mm. Thank you. And this is what I hate even more. I hate it when the power supplies are hardwired in. Some of them actually have little connectors and you can just undo them. But this, I'm actually going to have to desolder these in, an, in order to get this part out. And that just, oh, oh, just drives me into a rage. A crazy rage. Um, I need to find the Brucinator, the solder sucker. Why don't you like PSUs? I have several I need to try to repair. <laughs> All yours. <laughs> Ultrasonic cleaner today. Both MOSFETs were gone on it. Eh. Yeah. What sort was it? What brand? Is it just like a no-name brand or was it a branded ultrasonic cleaner? Kind of love the old ultrasonic cleaner. I've got a... Um, I bought a whole bunch of new ultrasonic cleaner parts. I bought transducers and um, and drivers from a completely different company. So I'm really curious to see how well they go. Uh, interestingly enough, what I have found is that the drivers are the same drivers that are inside Steve from Mac84's ultrasonic cleaner. Now, just in case you're wondering why I know that, it's because 
Uh, I asked Steve to send me some photos of the inside of his ultrasonic cleaner when he, excuse me, he was doing some work on it for something else that I was working on. So he took a little uh, few photos for me. So I've now got these little photos of the inside of Steve's ultrasonic cleaner. And I happen to notice that the drivers here using, he's using are the same ones as I have just recently bought. So, you know, be hopeful. Why is that there? That's a nice cap. It's a handsome cap. It's like a Panasonic cap. I've got to keep that. It's not rubbish. Um, well, I, I was looking for the solder sucker, but I ah, found it. They may or exceed the specs. They're important, except that my MOSFETs seem made with extra internal diodes. I hope that isn't an issue. Me too. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Not happy. It's, it's not, it's, uh, yeah, it's not happy Jan, as in, not Jam, J-A-M. It's J-A-N is in a person. So essentially the premise of the commercial was this. It was back in the days when you had yellow pages like a business directory. These days it's all online, but it's back in the days when you had the business directory and the company that used to make that out here, um, Telstra, or Telecom as they used to be known, Telstra uh, used to run an ad uh, a little bit before it, it was time to put in your submission to be in the next issue of the Yellow Pages. So let's just say, I don't remember what the date was, but let's just say they cut off applications for it at the end of June or something like that. Um, and they, uh, they ran this ad where a woman was looking in the Yellow Pages for her listing, her company's listing, and it wasn't there. And she was like, Jan, where is our entry in the Yellow Pages? And then she's looked Jan, and then she looks out the window and she sees Jan's doing a bolt because she's clearly forgotten to put the application in. And she just opens the window and clams up and goes, not happy, Jan. And yeah, it just became part of the vernacular. So when people are not happy, they say, not happy, Jan. Uh, and the latest one that has just entered into our vernacular is, uh, uh, we should get sushi cattle. That's, uh, don't know why, I mean, that really took off. That was an ad for eBay. Oh, the solder leaking out my thing. There we go. So what I'm doing at the moment is just removing the solder from the uh, main wires here, the mains power wires, so I can disconnect it from the case. It will make life a lot easier and make it easier for me to work on it. These um, uh, little uh, wires usually have little barbs on the end of them so that when they go in, they can't just fall out again. So I have to kind of squeeze them, squeeze those barbs in so that I can take them out again. You know, you like it? You like the, oh, the grime? <laughs> it's just amazing how dirty stuff gets out here. Yeah, I, I think that might need a clean, what do you reckon? I might chuck that in the ultrasonic. <laughs> Disgusting. Disgusting. Mm, 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 mm. I just tend not to notice until someone points it out. They go, man, that is disgusting. And I go, Oh crap, it is too. <laughs> yeah, let's do something about that. Mm. Come on, little wire. Must you vex me so? Oh, what do I do? I just clicked something. Um, I need my glasses, my little zoomy zoomy glasses, so that I can have a look at this a little bit closer. How about this whole thing about it being like end of November already? Is that freaking anyone else out? It's freaking me out. Okay. Now this one, yep, he's out. Now this one, these are glued in as well. So he's gonna need that little coaxing. Come on, glue.
I sure hope these are labelled because I haven't paid any attention to which one goes where. Boop, boop, boop. Boopity boop. Uh, Steve just uh, released a new video on the old Molar Mac. Um, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I believe, Steve, did you get the bad one or did Sean get the bad one? I think Steve got the bad one and Sean got the good one. Well, ah, so Steve essentially got a parts machine, I think. And oh dear, what's that? Oh, that's right, that's okay. I just rolled my chair over a floppy disk. I rolled my chair over ah, a save file icon. Um, I dropped the blade, um, and I don't think I'm going to find it. I don't know how things just seem to fall straight down and then bounce halfway across this uh, shed, but that's what they do. So we'll just be getting a new, a new blade. All right, so there's the bit we don't want, and let's just check and see if they are labelled. They are L for live, N for neutral. And no label for ground, but it's the hole in the board. I'm sure I'll figure it out. Right here, or Earth. Earth. Uh, Sean got the working one, mine is the rusted one. Cool. Um, I would not recommend getting sushi from eBay. No, so uh, the ad, that ad, the way it works is uh, it's a bunch of people in an office and they're all yelling at each other. And they're like, what's going on? And it's like, well, it's eBay Tuesdays. They've got all sorts of specials on it. And everyone's just bought some noise cancelling headphones. So everyone's in this office wearing noise cancelling headphones, yelling at each other. And one of the guys just turns around and says, we should get sushi cattle. Really loud. And it's just, just made people laugh. And yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't mind a bit of sushi, to be honest. Right, so. Uh, I'm going to just completely jump across here and do something else for a second here. Um, this is a little part from an Arduino. Arduino, for anyone who's done any work with Arduinos, they are like a little microcomputer that you can then program to get to do stuff and then you can attach things to it like sensors and relays and solenoids and whatever and you can then program them to do your bidding. So people sometimes use Arduinos to build um, robots and things like that um, or, you know, in the instance of the... Um, the blue SCSI, that little blue pill, that little board that goes onto the blue SCSI, that is, um, I believe, the blue pill is an Arduino uh, processor, so you can program that to do things. Um, so anyhow, um, I got this little guy, and it is a, it's a relay. So uh, you can connect this up so that you can program the Arduino to send five volts down to this. That will make this uh, relay close, and then that'll, this works like a switch for 200 and, 240 volts. Um, or mains power, I should say, whether it's 240 volts, whatever. Anyhow, so I got this, and it's meant to take <clears throat> 10 amps or something, which is just laughable. So I used this, uh, and what happened was, if the relay has been on for a while, for a few, for a few minutes, it's, it fuses shut. And so then when you turn off the power to it, so that it's, you're meant to dis it's meant to disconnect the relay, you take the power away, it stays closed because it's just kind of fused. And then you literally have to whack it on the side to open it up again. Now that is bad. I mean, if I wanted to use this for something like a thermostat, it means the thing's going to just stay on and not come off when it gets up to temp. That is just really freaking dangerous in my opinion. So not happy with that at all. Anyhow, um, what I have done is I've bought some of these. The, uh, these are some um, 250 volt um, Omron, uh, for, you know, five volt, you know, five volt uh, DC, 250 volt AC relays made by Omron. I trust Omron. Do you trust Omron? I trust Omron. I think they're a great brand. And I'm going to put this on here. Now, the only downside is that um, the, this relay is a little bit bigger. You'll see it's a, it's a little bit fat. It's got a gut like me just there. So yeah, it sticks out further. So what I'm going to do is I will take this off. I will put this on there. The pins are in the same uh, position, but I'll then take this connector. I'll flip it onto the other side. So that'll, that'll work. I mean, I know it won't be as tidy, but it'll do the job. So, uh, okie dokie. Not happy, Jan. Yep. Uh, Steve does have the better plastic until they betray. <laughs> 
So uh, tell me something, Steve. I'd really, if you're still in the chat there, I'd like to know. I haven't watched this in your video, and you probably explain it in the video. So my apologies if uh, if this is something you do answer in the video. I will be watching your video later today. Um, do you intend um, just having that as a parts machine, or do you intend uh, replacing the board with a new board? For those who don't know, it's my understanding that all those G3s had exactly the same logic board. I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but it's my understanding that the G3 desktop, G3 tower, and the G3 all-in-one all had exactly the same logic board, and you could theoretically go in and swap them around. It's all answered in the video. <coughs> so I have to watch it. I have to watch it before I get to find out everything. All right, okay. So uh, no spoilers, everyone has to watch it. Just not now, because I'm live streaming. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take this old relay off. I'm going to go ahead and remove the, uh, the relay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the new one on. Blue and white whiteboard is totally different. Yeah. Yes, the base systems have the same logic board. That's good to know because I suspect you'll find you should be able to find a replacement board. You know, um, in particular, if you've if someone's got either the tower or the um, the desktop unit, and the plastics have all been smashed to crap. You know, because that's very easy to happen. You uh, you may well be able to find a, a good a board there. Uh, I actually have both a G3 desktop and a G3 tower. I had zero desire to own either of them. Oh, for fringe, snidge. Okay, um, I had uh, no desire to own uh, either of those particular computers, but once I had them, I was actually like, man, these are cool. Particularly the tower, I love that tower. Um, and it is a G3, so it is reasonably powerful. You can do some cool stuff on it. Um, you know, if you want to run OS 9 on those, those G3s, uh, they're quick. Um, the top just came off this. Um, all right, I'm going to have to get under the microscope and remove some of the solder with my wick because it's not coming off. Uh, Steve did not hurt himself on screen. Wow. Not trying hard enough. I need to go higher. I oh, know. I'm good. So that looks fine. Oh no, that's because I've got some solder on it. Still got some solder. Really only takes a little tiny bit of solder left behind to make it very hard to get something off. Um, and you can just be forceful. You can just wrench it off. And in most instances you'll be alright, but you can do damage. And I don't really care what happens to this old relay. I don't care if I breaks it. Oh, how are everybody doing today, huh? Are you good? Ah, got it. Very nice, very nice. Come on, off you come, little connector. You know you want I had the misfortune of uh, spending a little bit of time on Twitter this morning. What a freaking cesspool that place is. Okay, let's pop the, pop the new one on. Just like that. You'll fit, you'll fit. I'll make you fit, don't you worry. Just gotta bend this out a bit, bend. There we go, look at that. Ah, 
Mike Walker, hello there, and I think I've said hello to you. If there's anyone else who has said hello and I haven't replied, it's not personal. I miss things. Uh, feel free to say hello again. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask. Yeah, every time I do a live stream, it's a Q&A. Yes, sirree. Um, I am... Ooh, scope view. Um, as I mentioned before, I have a new ultrasonic project underway at the moment. I can't give too many details away. Um, I noticed another... DIY ultrasonic video came up on YouTube the other day, which I watched. Um, I was able to immediately see a whole series of problems that person's going to encounter. And this is one of the reasons why I'm motivated to uh, do, to finish up my other ultrasonic cleaner video, because I do like to try and share knowledge about this stuff. So that if someone else wants to build an ultrasonic cleaner, they build it um, so that it's going to work. So it's going to be reliable. It's going to last. All right, so this is our little flipping the side of the connector. And soldery doldery. So we've got NC and NO there, which we normally close and normally open. So you can set this relay up so that it will, it will the power will be on. And then when the relay uh, activates, the power will be switched off. Or you can have it so the power is off, and then the, when the relay activates, the power switch is on. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, just checking here. All right, all good. All righty. All right, so I'm going to just get this power supply. I have here, which you can't see, but it's here. Trust me. What if I went this view? How about this view? Side view. Nope, you still can't see it. It's just pointing straight at my fat gut. Not to worry. So I'm going to get this power supply. I'm going to set it to 5 volts. There we go. And 5 volts is what it should take to make this relay activate. And it will go click. So... I put that there, I believe, and I think is it there? There we go. Okay, so I don't, you can't. So I'll switch it around that way. So there's the minus on that side, and then we get a little light here. E, can you see the light? Now, what we need to do is I need to make this positive, hit both these pins, not just one. So I'm going to do that now, and then we should hear it go click. You may not hear it go click, it might be too quiet, but I will hear it go click, and I'll then relay that information to you. Okay, ready? It didn't go click. Oh, yes it did. It's got a slight delay about it, isn't that interesting? But it, do it does it. I don't know if you can hear it, but anyhow, it's there. It's doing its thing. Okay, so that is now one more useful relay that isn't going to seize up and stay on like some sort of crazy waste of money. Um, all right. We were looking at a power supply before. Oh, Trina's off. Good night, Trina. See, I could have streamed earlier today. Uh, no, I couldn't. I couldn't really. I had a meeting and the person didn't turn up. And so then we rescheduled the meeting until after. But, yeah. Okay, so this is... Um, this is the uh, an SE30 uh, power supply. Now, it might look like there's some leaky stuff going on here, but it's not. That is like a conformal coating that they've painted over the bottom of this. Uh, now the areas of particular interest with this um, with this power supply is is up this end here. So you've got one guy here, one guy here, you've got one guy here, two guys in here, one guy here. It's all of these caps hanging on the end here. Uh, they're all the sorts of caps that are going to, most probably going to give you some leakage. So. Uh, do, do, do. 
Do, do, do. Yeah, what's that? Sorry, Flux Video? What? Flux Video? What? what? Uh, when I visited Lewis Rossman's shop yesterday, I did the selfless thing and mentioned your Flux Video. Vi vid video, okay, yep. Uh, channel to him instead of promoting my things. Well, thank you. I've had my Flux Video have been posted into the, like their Discord and stuff many times. Um, I, Lewis Rossman doesn't seem to be particularly interested. I'm not sure I'd necessarily blame him. The, the whole thing with the Flux is there are two different things here that you've basically got a company called Interflux and then you've got Amtec. Now, I think it's called Interflux. No, it's not Interflux, it's um, something tech. Something tech. I don't have an old tube here to look at. Inventec. Inventec. That's right. Got a bit of a breeze just came through there. Um, yeah, company's called Inventec. And so you've got Inventec and you've got Amtec. And Inventec have been selling Flux for ages and ages and ages. And then Amtec have kind of taken over the brand name. And, or taken back the brand name, shall we say. But Inventec are still continuing to sell under the name Amtec. Um, I got an email the other day from Inventec. I haven't responded to it yet. I will need to do that. And essentially they are trying, they've seen my video and they are trying very hard to, I guess, try and restore their name. Um, there is, the main reason why I did the video was because apparently Inventec, apparently, allegedly Inventec have been selling a product uh, under the wrong name. Now that's not to say it is a counterfeit product. I am not as, as saying it is a counterfeit product. It is an Amtec formula for a product. But the claim is that they allegedly were selling um, the ASM formula under the V2 name. And thus far I haven't heard them respond to that allegation at all. Uh, so I am going to be, when I reply to the email, I am going to be saying, look, guys, at no stage have I ever said that you guys are making counter a counterfeit product. The claim is this. What is your response to that? Um, we'll see what happens. But uh, the guys at Amtec that have taken over the name contacted me the other day as well. They've got a whole stack of new products coming out, um, new formulas that they've been working on and making improvements. Um, they're going to be sending some of those samples to me, so I'll be doing a video on that as well. Um, so, yeah, um, there are counterfeit ones out there. There are ways to protect yourself from that. Um, but there are counterfeit uh, ones out there. And not only that, there are actually people out there selling the genuine product in, like, dodgy labels, you know, blank blank labels or just, you know, because what some people have been doing is they've been buying large quantities of Amtec formula um, stuff, you know, that, and then putting that in a syringe themselves and reselling it. And that stuff looks as dodgy as anything. It looks like full on counterfeit, but it's actually not. So that sort of stuff's going on as well. So it is, it's a bit of a minefield um, knowing, you know, knowing where to get the flux if you are an Amtec flux user. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have to say, I've never had any counterfeit product. I thought I had, but I hadn't. Uh, Felino Facho, hello from Chile, hello right back at you, and Reed Reinfeld, hello there. Um, so yeah, anyhow, oh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't done this once during this live stream. Smash that like button. Now I've done it once during this live stream. Uh, the other thing I should of course mention is Kai Wheats, KM601. God, it's so long since I've said that, I almost forgot what the brand was. Um, Kai Wheats, KM601, multimeter. Nil. Yeah, it's a damn fine multimeter. Uh, links in the description. I think there's even a discount code. If you put that in there, you will get a discount on this fine, fine multimeter. Um, look at all the things it does. Yeah. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, right. Alrighty, so uh, here's the power supply. We're going to whip some of these caps off, uh, see what they look like, and probably put some new ones on there. Um, if you've got a problem with an SE30, generally the, 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 the signs that I have seen, 
that a, a power supply in an SE30 is having a problem is sometimes you might switch it on at the back and it doesn't come on straight away. You have to wait a couple of seconds and then it comes on. So yeah, um, and that. Uh, I lost my scalpel blade, I need another. I mean, it's not lost, lost, it's on the floor somewhere. Do, do, do. Just a reminder to people, Startup Disc is full. New channel that I've set up with Jay from the House of Moth and from Dana Doesn't Do Anything. And it is... Nope, is that it? Yeah, that's it. It is the Binus. It is a tech chat show where we just talk about things uh, we have done three episodes so far. The fourth is going to come out tomorrow. Um, it is um, fun. It's meant to be fun. Overly long. It's, it's way too long. Well, we don't seem to be able to fix that. We, we know the problem exists, but we just haven't been able to resolve it. Um, so, uh, yeah. Please check it out. Please subscribe. When we get to 100 subscribers, we are going to do a live show. And our next show, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks' time... Uh, is going to have a very special guest star. Yeah, We had a special guest star in the last episode, Hal Bergman, who is a uh, professional photographer and videographer. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he was a very interesting person to have on, so that was great. Uh, okay, let's get some caps off this. <coughs> Here it is. Here it is. Right, I know this is a weird time for me to live stream. I don't normally live stream. And what is it, Monday? Monday over there in the States or in uh, that part of the world. Um, it is Tuesday here. I shouldn't really be live streaming. I've got a huge amount of work to do. But I saw this little opportunity um, to live stream. I, just, I was originally supposed to have a meeting this morning. That fell through. That's now been scheduled for later this afternoon. And I... And doing some work for someone else as well, and I'm meeting with them about that this afternoon. And I just thought, you know what, if I can just sneak in at a live stream between these meetings, it'll get some content up onto YouTube. I can get a little bit of work done, because people are starting to freak out. You know, they're like, hey, Bruce, you've had my stuff for such a long time. And I'm like, yeah, I know, sorry. Scope view. All right, let's have a little look at this cap and see what we see. This one's not looking too bad. Don't see any major leakage. There's a little bit of crustiness there. And I definitely think it's a good idea to replace it. We can check the equivalent series resistance if we like. Um, but what we might do is just check the capacitance. Uh, one thing I will say about the Kowitz KM601, it is quite slow to give you a capacitance reading. The power button's up here. I've forgotten how it works. Retro Techie, hello there. Um, let's go here, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. So let's check the capacitance of this capacitor Rooney. No. It says 50 microfarads. It's 47, so look, I can see that reasonably in spec. I don't know what the uh, ASR is like. What does this thing say? I've got this machine here. I still haven't figured out how to work it properly. But that's normal for me. It's, it's cool, isn't it? Oh, actually, you can't see it. Isn't this a cool thing? Look at it. Great big thing. It's just so cool. Love the things. Um, all right. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're going to do... Need the little, the little grabby things. Oh, oh crap, it's gone now. It's gone. It's fallen down on the ground. It'll never be seen again. That's it. It's done for. It was 47 microfarads. Uh, let's see if I've got a recapping guide on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Looking, looking. Looking, looking, looking. Looking. 
Adrian Black tool for removing grommets. Mm, no. Oh, I think it's going to be the last one I come across. There it is. SE... Th no, this isn't it. This is the Sony power supply. This is not the Sony power supply. This is the other one. I, I do have a photo of it, but I just don't know if I've turned it into a guide. I mean, I must have at some stage. Oh, no, hang on. No. Yeah, I've, I'm sure I've done it. God, pull yourself together, Rain. Come on. Maybe it's on the website and they haven't printed it out. That's always possible. I think it was 4763 volts, something like that. Does that sound right? I really don't want to have to go around crawling on the ground to find it. Eh. <sighs> But, you know, it won't be the first time I was crawling on the ground. New. N. Uh, Recapamac. There's this cool website called Recapamac. Ever heard of it? It's got pictures of boards and recapping guides and stuff. People use my photos all the time. I probably should have white marked them. Never mind. Watermarked them. SE30. Not. No, I haven't got any guides on the power supplies, so I'm going to have to crawl around on the floor. The alternative is I go up to the office and have a look at because I've got some guides. What's here repairing? That's a good question. Randy, what is here repairing? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to put a little thing up here. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the... This. That's what time it is here now. Got to have that there. It's important. And then... I'm going to say, uh, SE30 power supply. There we go. And bing. There we go. Um... It stacks with their Black Friday discount, so you get it even cheaper, do you? Wow. That's impressive. Ah. Oh, good old Black Friday, eh? Ah. Excuse me. Is that it? It's not it. Where do you reckon that cap went? so many places it can go. Get my torch out here. My flashlight, as some people say. God, you know. Oh, I found the blade. Remember I dropped the blade before? Well, I just found it. How cool is that? Oh, I found a screwdriver down here as well. Uh, there's a couple of caps, not the ones I want. Um, what the hell is that? It's a piece of something. Oh, a whole bag of caps there. Another cap. A lot of caps fall on the floor. Is that it? That looks too big. Felt like the other one was smaller than that. It's the right colour though. Oh, No, definitely not that. Um, well, I'll tell you what I can do. Actually, someone else might be able to do this. Um, I can go back in the video, watch me, uh, watch me with the microscope, a uh, thing under the microscope, and see, uh, See what it uh, what it was. Do do do. 
Bailey's replenished. Carry on. Good, good, good. Okay, so Jay, here's my, here's my conundrum. And you might be able to help me out because you're good at this. Can you rewind back the video until I was looking at a capacitor under the microscope and tell me what the rating of it was? It was a um, 47 microfarad capacitor and I think it was 63 volts, but does that sound right? I don't know. Mm, 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 mm. I dropped it on the floor and, and the floor... Oh, look, 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 look. <sighs> 63 volt, 47 microfarad. Thank heavens for that. Right, let's get the 63 ones out. Excuse me, pull my pants up. 63 volt. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Oh. 4763. Shabang a bang. Hurrah, baba. No need to go back now. Okay, here we go. Let's put a cap on. We're gonna work our way across this. As I don't have a guide, if I had a guide, I'd just whip them all off. But as I don't have a guide, I kinda of have to do it one at a time so that I don't get things muddled up and mixed up and stuff. So, here's our little replacement cap. What a lot of people do when they are replacing caps, they put a little mark on the top as they replace them. Shouldn't need to do that on this. The old ones look very distinctive compared to what I put on them. Excuse me. 47 is all I saw. Cool. I need my goggles for this because my vision is not the best. I'm actually thinking about getting some special glasses made up for working down here in the workshop. Get them done with two separate magnifications. So the top will be the magnification for me to look at the screen and then the bottom will be high magnification for me to do this repairy rarey stuff. All right, first cap has been replaced. At this rate, we'll get it done by Christmas. All right, let's get the next one off. So I do need to be finished by about 2 p.m. What time is it? 12.58. So that gives me an hour and two minutes left. Um, I need to get myself a little bit of food and I need to then get myself ready for a 2.30 meeting. And uh, yeah, I've got a video job, believe it or not. Someone's actually asked me to come out and film something. Who does that? Okay, this cap doesn't look too bad either. 25 volt to tw 25 volt to 20. Let's get the 25 volt caps out. Ugh. 10, 50, 35. Uh, where have I hidden the 25s? Better not be there. Nope. 25. Oh, there they are. Uh, right above the 50s. Nothing like having a system. Uh, okay. What did I say it was? 220? what I said. Oh, that's the old one. Piss off. I think I said 25, 220. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> Empty. Let me just make a note that I need some 25, 220s. <laughs> 25. UF 220, no, 25, 25V, 25V 220UF. All right, so let's see if we've got a 35. Bifocals like bi-weekly. <laughs> See, you actually, you've, you've made the wrong point there, I'm afraid, Joe. You said bifocals, like bi-weekly. So in other words, one pair of glasses split into two. So when you say bi-weekly, it's like one week that's been split into two. So it's something that's going to happen twice in one week. It's not the same as a fortnight. 
Uh, 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 uh. Oh, All right, I got a 220.35, that'll do me. Doesn't matter if we go up in voltage a little bit. Don't want to change the capacitance values, but going up in voltage is generally not a problem. Don't want to go up too far because it can change the equivalent series resistance. But uh, going from 25 to 35 ain't going to be a problem. Is that the one that I took off? Oh, frap. 25, 220. Yep. This one's a slightly fatter cap, but that's okay. I can sympathize with it. Whoop. What's going on? My phone's ringing. I have a system with my phone. If I don't recognize the number, I don't answer it. It's working really well for me. <laughs> I know exactly what bi-weekly means. It's something that happens twice in a week. There's a lot of glue on this, unfortunately. So this one's going to be a bit of a bugger to get off. Can't be helped. It's that snot they put on there. Something smells. I wonder if it's just that glue melting. Sometimes when you get pongs on this, it can be glue melting or it can be uh, capacitor leakage. I think this one is just the glue. This glue is a real pain on this one. Actually, the glue doesn't smell too bad, so maybe it is capacitor leakage. Bi-weekly is not every other week. That's fortnightly. Bi-weekly is happening twice a, twice a week. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up. Here we go. God, this capacitor is really making me work. Okay, got him off. With one. Here we go. This is the worst one so far. Or the goop. Just lots and lots of glue holding this thing on. I just want that out of the way for when I put the replacement on. There we go. And definitely pongs a bit. It's a bit fishy, this one. So this is a 220.16. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame you're both wrong, but you know, 
I appreciate all the effort you're putting in. Uh, 16 volt, 16 volt, 16 volt, um, 16 volt. That's that one. I feel like I am missing a bunch of capacitors. Um, there's 35, there's... maybe they're here. They're here, they're here. Ugh. Right, so, what are we up to now? Yeah, it's just better off using fortnightly. Much simpler. So, uh, it's because the, the thing is that it is a word that exists in the English language. I don't know why Americans are so opposed to using the term fortnightly. It's like 14 days, fortnight. It's fort, or 14 nights, fortnight. It's kind of weird, many are. Doesn't matter. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Um, I am looking here for, where'd my little stinky cap go? I didn't drop that too, did I? It was 22016, so, 22016, got heaps of those. Well, got fancy ones even. Look at this, I got like little Panasonic fancy fancy ones. Let's use those. Seeing as I have them, seeing as I bought them, So, this is now capacitor number three. We're certainly managing to speed it up a smidge. Not a whole lot, but it's a little bit faster than uh, it took me to do that first one. Eh. So, the biggest challenge I have with this board is the fact that we have lots of snot. It's that kind of gooey stuff that they put on here to try and stop the um, uh, the capacitors from vibrating and uh, it's uh, it's not really good when you're replacing caps it's actually another one of the reasons why I really don't like it when people bend pins when they're uh, putting components on because you know I'm always just thinking about the rework side of things having to actually go in and make some changes at a, at a later date and uh, having to deal with all those bent pins. This one is so glued in, this is gonna suck. God damn it. Right. Just gotta deal with it. Just gotta deal with it. It is what it is. I am what I am, as Papa used to say. Oh, this one definitely stinks. I've got a good old waff of uh, uh, burning capacitor juice then. Anyone who's done any recapping will know that smell very well. Um, it is... Ugh, it's been described as fishy, and I mean, I don't know, maybe it is. Um, but it's just a kind of pongy chemical smell. Ugh. Still doesn't look too bad though. 470, 16. 220, 470, 16. There we go. This one, this is a skinny one. 470, 16. A lot smaller than the original. <laughs> but hey, that's just technology, isn't it? Oh crap, I can't see where the positive and negative is. Because of the glue. Ah. My desk seems to be gradually leaning forwards. I got it pretty level at one stage, and when it was level it meant that I put things down there if they're circular and they stayed. But now they're rolling towards me again, so it's obviously not level anymore. So hang on, that was that way, wasn't it? Yep. That was that way. So that means negative is that way. Process of elimination. Elementary, my dear Watson. Yeah. 
Anyone seen any good films lately? Jay, you still in the chat? Have you watched the latest episode of Peripheral that came out last week? The Peripheral. That was exciting, that one. Definitely enjoying that series. Don't know if anyone else is seeing it. It's on Amazon Prime. The Peripheral. Uh, it, it gets a little dull sometimes, but on the whole, it's pretty... Oops. It's pretty interesting. Pretty exciting. I'm sort of in the market for a new series at the moment. I want something new. Glass Onion. Never heard of that. Yellowstone. <laughs> so essentially the issue we'll have with Yellowstone is that they're releasing it one episode at a time and I find that really annoying. I like to binge and so I kind of want to wait till there's a few episodes so that I can just have a bit of a binge before I start watching it. But Jay is desperate to actually talk to someone about the series so um, he's trying to get me to watch it. Um, the, the Yeah, hasn't happened yet. I reckon once I've got five, once there's five episodes I can watch in a row, I reckon I'll probably give it a crack. One of the things that I do not like about the streaming services is, uh, yeah, the uh, not, you know, releasing them at a bit, of, a bit at a time. I like it when they just get dumped all at once. Now this is a real cow of a capacity to get out because of its location. I will probably wreck it during the process. I am wrecking it during the process. It is in a very, very bad way. But as long as it comes out, I'm happy. Gotcha. Son of a gun, with your sorcerer's ways. Okay, 470.16, I think we already did one of those, didn't we? 470.16. Sorry about the wind, the wind's probably blowing up, that's the air conditioner. It's a little bit warm here, not hot, but just a little bit warm. It's about 25 degrees Celsius. Oh. So, and when you're in a shed, when you're in a, or a studio, as I like to call it sometimes, workshop, um, it's, uh, it gets a little bit toasty. Oh, fuzz. We're getting it done. That's the important thing. Poor guy who belong who owns this. Is, he's, he, I've had this here for a long time. I've just been putting it off and putting it off. I mean, one is time, but the other is, as I mentioned before, I freaking hate power supplies. Dana is here. Hello, Dana. We're talking about you before, talking about this fantastic new show that's available and we need people to watch it and subscribe and it's called Startup Disc is Full and Dana's on there. Yeah. And Jay, of course.
new episode coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, come on, don't be a dick. There we go. I'm a little bit hungry now. What am I going to eat? I don't actually have much here at the moment. I need to go shopping and buy some stuff. I had a kebab for lunch yesterday. Doner kebab. Nice. Very tasty. Hmm. Uh, 1,210 volts. Uh, so now I have to get another container down. Where is me tens? Where's me tens? Uh, uh. Oh, that one's really hard to get. That's hope I don't have to do that again. So, uh. You can just come, come along for the ride. Uh. Okay. Uh. 1,210. 1,210. 1,210. 1,210. 1,210. That's the worst thing about power supplies. You just got to have so many freaking capacities. wanting to swear, really, really wanting to swear, but deciding not to, because, you know, want to be good. Yeah, look at that. Did I just get it on backwards? I think I just put this on backwards. Got it on, but I got it on backwards. Ah, oh, it was right. It was right. It was right all along. Still, I'm going to use the same system that I used before. It worked for me. So I'm hopeful. Yeah, look at that. Oh. Farewell, Reed. Thank you for joining. Uh, Oh, thank you very much, Jay, for that little poster Rooney there. Feel free to put in the link to Startup Disc is Full as well, so people can experience for themselves just how awesome that show is. New episode, episode tomorrow. You need to subscribe if you want to get the notification. Hit that bell. Do, excuse me, what you have to do. These caps really haven't been that bad and I find that a little bit disappointing. Because typically when I've got one where someone is reporting problems, I like to see stuff. I mean, and they've been a little bit stinky. And there's no harm in replacing these. I mean, these are old. So uh, it's definitely the right thing to do. But uh, 
I like it when I see stuff that's like, obviously, yeah, that's bad. And I could go and test every single one of them, see how far out of spec they are, but yeah. If I were a younger man. How many subscribers are we at, Jay, on the old uh, startup disk is full? How many subs are we at? We're going to do a live stream when we get to 100, so. I want to know how far away we are. Another 1210. <sighs> Macyak is new this week too. Was it? Is this this week? It's last week. What? Or is it next week? I don't know. I'm getting all mixed up. So if we just did our show, that means Macyak was last week. So Macyak will be coming up at the end of this week, yeah? Does that sound right? Thank you. 76 subs. People be slacking. <laughs> Maybe people don't want us to live stream. They're like, God, let's not, let's not do this. Once they get to 100, they're going to live stream. That'll be a nightmare. <laughs> don't do it. I blame Elon Musk. It's his fault. Okay. He is the reason we're not getting the subs we need. Okay, well, I've replaced all of the typically problematic caps. Um, these big fat guys here, I don't have as many problems with those. Um, what are they, 330 microfarad, 200 um, working volts, WV, that's what WV is for, working volts. What's this little guy here? Uh, I, if I am continuing to have problems with this, I will probably look into replacing those bigger caps, but as I say, I'm just generally going with what I, what normally happens with these. God, stupid bloody glue. These people with their glue. And Steve wasn't demonetized before he was. Oh, dear. Yeah, so Steve, you, you can't make it to the next Mac yet, can you? I think, did you say that? You're uh, elsewhere or something. We haven't seen GT for the last two episodes. Okay, I'm going to have to take this out to read it because I can't read it. 16 volt something. So we'll just whip it out. Have a quick look. If I have a replacement, I'll replace it. If I don't, I'll put it back in. At least for testing anyway. One of the worst parts of being as busy as I've been lately is I have, just haven't even had time to play around with some of these computers. And I love to just set them up every now and again and just play some old games or whatever. Oops, I keep clicking the mouse. Um, and uh, yeah, when I'm really busy, I just don't get a chance to do that. And it's disappointing. Travelling for business. Cool. Bareness. Oh, did you get demonetized, did you, Jay? 
Did they switch you off again? I didn't even think they did that. I thought they were just like, yeah, once you're there, you're there. Balls. It's freaking glue. Stupid ass hat. All right, this is a, oh, 16 volt 2200. I'm bound to have one of those, surely. That'll be in my other 16 volt container because I've got, I've got so many 16 volts. I've got little 16 volts and big 16 volts. Ah. And this is the big 16 volts container. Oh, schnuz. So that's 16 volt 2200. Here we go. I've got lots of them. I've got short fiat ones and I've got tall skinny ones. I'm going to use a tall skinny one for this because it fits. Uh, the short fat ones I like to save for times when nothing else fits. Unless of course the lead spacing is way out. Oh, poo head. It is way out. All right. All right. Okay, all right. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. We all right? Yeah, we're okay. All right, so we're just replacing that one. And that is a 16 volt 2200 microfarad capacitor. How are we doing for time? Oh, still not too bad. Right. Well, assuming there hasn't been something disastrous going on, I think we should be pretty good. We replaced some caps. We had some laughs. <clears throat> Okay, this is, we're going to smash my like button, count number two. Smash that like button. Did I say smash my like button? <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with my brain. Okay, top view. All right, so I'm feeling pretty recapalicious about this. So um, let's put him back together again. This part I hate. Got to connect these wires up here, and it's always a little bit cumbersome. So we've got live here. Live is brown. Now, a few people use different mnemonics for remembering what color is what with the live and neutral. Um, a lot of people are like the brown one, that's the color your undies will be if you touch the wires. So that's how they remember it. I just do it as in neutral is blue, cool. So it's cool and neutral. So that's, that's my little mnemonic that I use. Am I even plugged into the right one? No. I just plugged the, the live into the neutral because, uh, you know, I'm crazy like that. You're coming back out again. Stop it. There we go.
white neutral black hot. Yeah, they're not that colour here. They are brown and blue, brown and blue. Um, so over here, the way it works is generally, generally, if you're working with old wires, it's a different story. But generally, uh, if it's uh, brown and blue, you're talking about AC. If it's black and red, you're talking about DC. Now, having said that, uh, the colours used to be black and red here, so you can't just use that as a kind of a blanket. Everything is like that. Um, <laughs> and of course, green's bloody obvious because green's been unchanging all this time. Green's always been green. Oh, fudge. How come, how, 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 why is this cable shorter than the other one? Huh? Who did that? Oh, Joe, hello, Joe. I still haven't sent you that video, have I? God, I'm an asshole. Uh, I should just send you the link and you can kind of discover it for yourself, but I'm just concerned that there are issues. Uh, there are things that you're gonna just confuse the hell out of you. And it would make a lot more sense for me to just give you instructions on how it works. Uh, I'll do it, I promise I'll do it, I promise. Uh, I have a bit of a time issue at the moment. I mean, I'm only live streaming today because I haven't done it in like three weeks and it's like, God, I've got to do it. But I've just been so busy lately. It's not good, it's not sustainable, put it that way. I'll lose my brain even more. <laughs> All right, so. Do you like working on power supplies, Joe? I hate working on power supplies. can actually do that. I might be able to start doing that. I might actually just say to people, sorry, I don't do power supplies. You have to send them somewhere else. Because you know what the next question will be. Where? Where should I send them? I don't know. I can't see. Okay. Yeah. A1200 went 27 years without a hitch before recap. About 30 years old. Yeah, um, those A1200s, I've I got to tell you, they really do need recapping. Um, I'm not saying that... Actually, no, it was the A600s were the, the worst ones. So I recapped a few A1200s, and the first ones that I got they were fine. There was virtually no capacitor leakage or anything like that. And I was like, oh God, you know, and it's a good thing to do as a precaution, but the A1200s, just those caps seem to be fine. And then the last couple I had, they were a mess. I ended up having to do all sorts of trace repair and corrosion repair because the uh, capacitor leakage had left them in a really bad way. So uh, yes, A1200 definitely still does need recapping. A600 even more so. I guess they must use different caps on the A600 or something, but they are uh, they're bad. Uh, okay, now I've got this stupid freaking thing, which I don't like. Jeez, I'm angry today, aren't I? Angry bird. Yeah. Maybe it's because I got stood up at a meeting this morning. 
someone scheduled a meeting with me and then they didn't turn up. I'm never a big fan of that. Come on. Mm -hmm. At least I could work while I was waiting for the meeting. Yeah, no one checks the... I mean, I... You know... Uh, the biggest problem I have at the moment is people want to send me whole computers. They don't want to just send me a board. They want to send me the whole freaking thing. And I just don't have room to store computers at the moment. Um, so... Uh, and, it, you know, if it was just a matter of me doing it and then away we go, that's fine. But virtually every uh, computer I get these days is not just a simple recap. Uh, particularly things like Mac Classics. Uh, they are more and more prone to problems. I had one the other day, recapped it, problems, uh, replaced the CPU in it, fixed it, great, sent it back. Now he can't get it working. And you know what it is? I don't think there was anything wrong with the CPU in the first place. I think just when I replaced it, it was probably a crack on the board somewhere uh, and something just not making proper contact. And when I replaced the CPU, uh, it heated it up or whatever. If the board was twisted or whatever the case is. And I just, I seriously don't think, um, I think there's a crack somewhere and I just have to find it. So he's gonna have to send the board back to me. I'm then gonna have to sit there uh, and go over it with a fine tooth comb. Um, yeah, and try and find a crack somewhere on the board. And of course it's intermittent as well, so it can suddenly start working and it still may not be fixed. So they're the ones that I love, they're the ones that I'm uh, getting a lot of these days. And of course one of my very uh, close friends is about to send me something um, that I'm kind of terrified about working on because it might be an extremely, ridiculously rare computer, um, as in like just crazy rare, as in the amount of money people spend on these things these days is just ridiculous. And it might start with L. And it might have five and a quarter inch floppy drives. <laughs> Larry. Larry. <laughs> I appreciate the guesswork, it's good. I've got a, a little, what do you call those things? Washer here that's meant to be here and it's not here so oh I bet you that's meant to be there and this is meant to be here I'll bet you <laughs> does it rhyme with Twiggy Lisa Yes, it does rhyme with Twiggy Lisa. <laughs> um, okay, this power supply is put together again. Do we want to try it? Shall we? Shall we? Yes. Uh, I think I should just have time to uh, fire it up and see if it works. Nate's here. Hello, Nate. There we go. How's everyone going with the uh, weather in the uh, 
northern part of the hemisphere over down here in the southern hemisphere it's starting to get warm it's been a very 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 mild sort of spring i mean it's like we've barely had any decent heat here at all and they're predicting that it's going to be a pretty cool and wet summer so i'm not happy about that and it's nice in that it's pleasant weather to be outdoors in and stuff but you know i expect this time of year to be stupid crazy hot here in sydney and it hasn't been um, it's been good for some of the plants though. They appreciate it not being that hot. Uh, there's my screwdriver. Uh, where's my screwdriver? See, this one doesn't fit it properly. Winter turned on here, yeah. Not cold enough, not snowy enough. Well, it's still fall there, isn't it? Autumn. Um, It's summer in two days here. I'm just looking down here for a screwdriver because I'm assuming it fell down here because I can't find Oh, look at that. It looks like a screwdriver. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Oh. Ah, so, if anyone is watching this live stream for the first time, I probably should have mentioned beforehand that this is one of the things that I do. If you have subscribed to my channel based on the strength of some of my solder soldering videos, beginner's guide to soldering videos, or maybe my ultrasonic cleaner videos, and then you're now watching this and thinking, what the hell is this? This is one of the other things that I do. I do uh, repairs to vintage computers and I live stream them. And the whole purpose of this is for it to be fun and social and light. And what the hell is that? What the hell is that? It's a friggin' white tail spider. It's a friggin' big white tail spider. Um, I might just take this outside. Holy cow. Yay! Yay! Come on, little guy. You'd be much better outside than in here, that's for sure. Whoopsie, there goes the microphone. Where is it? Come on. He's just, I looked away there and he disappeared. Far out. That is like the biggest white tail spider I've ever seen. Well, well, I sure hope he's gone. Can't see him anymore. Uh, yeah. We'll just keep an eye out for him, shall we? Uh, really do not want to get bitten by a white-tailed spider right now. Uh, Uh, they're a very, very small spider, but that was just a particularly big one. They're usually only about oh, that sort of size, but they just happen to have an extremely painful bite. <clears throat> and that one was a big one. And he was about oh, that sort of size. I sure hope he's not in this still, because he didn't look happy. He looked a bit pissed at me. Okay, all right. We're going to proceed um, with uh, with some purpose. What have I got here? This is an SE, I think. No, this is an SE30. Let's pop it into this. This one's in the not the bestest of condition at the moment, unfortunately. I'll need to spend a bit of time tidying it up, but it should do the trick for now. Come on. There we go. Uh, 
Now the person sent me the yoke connector and everything, the, the thingy, the this back connector thingy. <laughs> no, that was that was definitely the big one. Um, there's, uh, the, I've, I, as I say, I've never even seen a white tail spider that big before. So he was, uh, I'd say that would definitely be the grown up one. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, nope. Not this one. Eh. Eh. No, that's not it. Eh. With that one. Yeah, I'll do it. So I wouldn't normally take this off for what I'm doing, but because the person's given me virtually everything on their board, I may as well test everything. So. Apparently funnel webs are really bad at the moment because of the weather we've been having, having. So funnel webs are hiding in spots everywhere. Uh, funnel web is definitely a spider you do not want to have a confrontation with because they uh, get very, very aggressive and they have a very, very deep, painful and deadly bite. There is an antivenine, so if you do get bitten by a funnel web spider in this country, you will find an antivenine pretty much in every hospital around. Um, but I'd still rather not get bitten by one because, yeah. Well, let's face it, you don't want to test it out, do you? Will I survive this? Hmm, let's find out. No, that's a stupid thing to do. Right. Right, out comes the analog board. Please. Ah. Whoopsie dies. Here you are. Come on. What are you doing to me? There we go. So let's get rid of that one. That's my one. And let's plug in this other person's analog board. I haven't, I haven't uh, recapped the whole analog board. I may end up doing that. I mean, ultimately, there are a lot of times when people just send me stuff and say, yeah, recap everything. And then I go, okay, well, this is X dollars, and that's X dollars, and that's X dollars. And so that the whole, whole thing's going to cost you $350. And then people go, oh, yeah, just do, the, just do that one then. Because, you know. I mean, look, you've got to get pretty used to spiders in this country. Um, what's his name? Um, Ryan Goose. No, Gosling. Ryan Gosling is here at the moment with uh, his his wife. What's her name? Eva Mendes. Does that sound right? Um, and when I say here, I mean in Sydney because they're filming something. And she was on the telly the other day being interviewed and saying how much she hates the Australian huntsman spiders because they're great big hairy leggy things. I mean, they get huge. And, you know, I can, I can sympathize, but ultimately they're a pretty harmless sort of spider. I mean, they can bite you, but they generally won't. They'll just run away. I have bigger problems right now, like getting these holes to line up. I'm not going to do up all the screws on this. I'm just going to do up uh, like uh, one of each. It's not in. Get in. There we go. Now it's in. This is taking me a lot longer than I wanted. 
And with that, I apologize. I feel like something's not in properly. I don't sort of feel like I'm having to bend this way too much. Son of a gun. What is going on with this? What's it being such a poo-poo head? What? Why won't these bloody holes line up? Well, stuff it, they're not being done up then. And test it without it. Stupid, stupid thing. Stupid. It's trying to piss me off. Well, yeah, no, we don't have the Goliath spider here. Uh, yes, that's uh, that's in South America. That one we um, whoop. we've got some um, pretty impressive spiders, but yeah, not that one. The main claim to fame that we have here is the is the funnel web. That's probably. I mean, there's the red back, but that's just pretty much the same as your um, ah, your uh, black widow spider. Uh, the main one is the funnel web because that one can actually that can proper kill you if you don't get the uh, anti-venom you you will pretty much if i mean unless i mean you could survive a bite but you, you know there's a very good chance you would die from it so um without getting the anti-venom And of course, the other thing about the funnel web is they actually want to take you on. They're like, they're, you know, when, uh, if they're cornered, they like, we're going to stick the fangs up. All right, we need a SE30 logic board, which I, I have one here for just such an occasion. Ah. Somewhere. Um... Um, where did I put it? I mean, it was here. Like recently, it was here. I guess I could use this one. Oh no, here it is. Found it. Oh, there's no ROM plugged into it. Oh, but we can probably sort that out. I've got a big mess O wires ROM here. It's not going to chime because I haven't got the speaker plugged in. But all we're basically going to do, we're just going to see if it fires up. Um, with the new caps in there, I, when I say fires up, you know, let's, let's be careful what we say because I don't actually want a fire as such. Um, let's change the side view here. Hey, look at that. Okay, right, we're going to try this out. This is then going to be, I'm going to have to wrap it up because I said I've got a meeting. I've got to be responsible businessy person. It's hard to imagine. I'm not really. I'm still just a large child, a large 50 year old child. Okay, 
So, plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in. Uh, and I'm now going to switch it on. So, three, two, one. Fan is spinning. That's always a good sign. Oh, look at that. We've got Seamus CMAC. Oh, that's fine. That's the logic board. That's because this ROM isn't in properly. So, uh, I'll hold it in. I'm going to hold it in and we'll try that again. There we go. Got ourselves a little cursor. We'll get a flashing. Oh, yeah. That's because the ROM came out again. There we go. Um, so, yeah, it's all fine. It's all good. I'm happy with it. Um, it's, it has just switched on. We didn't have any delay when we switched it on, and that's a good sign. So I think we consider this one pretty happy. Uh, new caps in that one. Um, and so if I stay holding this, we can get the flashing question mark, because I haven't got it connected to SCSI at the moment. So but I stay holding this little guy. Little guy, there's a little cursor there. And... Any minute now. Any minute now. Any minute now. Oh, big mess of wires. There we go. It takes a long time to start up because um, it's doing a RAM check and this has bucket loads of RAM in it. So there we go, flashing question mark. That's good. So um, I'm going to do some more tests on that. More importantly, the what I kind of need to do with it is that I need to leave it switched off and then come back and switch it on because generally they have more problems when they're cold than when they're warmed up. So in order for me to kind of properly test that, I'm gonna to need to let it sit for a bit and then plug it in and all that sort of stuff and things and things and stuff. Um. Oy, 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 oy. There we go. Um, but I, uh, I basically consider that a fairly successful uh, uh, power supply recap. Um, if I have any problems with the display geometry or something like that. Actually, I'll speak. To, I'll just speak to the guy. I'll say, do you want me to recap that analog board as well? And if he says yes, then I'll do it. If he says, should I do it? I will say, um, let me do a couple of tests. Um, it'll need to be done eventually one day, but you know, you might get another five years out of it. So, uh, right. Bruce shipped my box with the parts I need to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny joke, Jay. Um, but it will happen. It will actually happen. I, I feel like I'm I'm pretty much emotionally prepared for sending that stuff now. All right. So, guys, hello. Thank you. I will. Um, I will. I just want to say thank you all for watching. Sorry, I haven't live streamed in such a long time. It has been a very long time. Uh, and for that, I apologise, and that has basically just been because life and work and stuff have been getting in their way at the moment. I have a full-time job as a, as a web developer, and that is keeping me extremely busy. I have I am selling stuff online with the blue scuzzies and scuzzy uh, and the uh, Zulu scuzzies and stuff like that. Uh, I am repairing Macs, and I am doing a YouTube channel, and I am also doing another YouTube channel, and I'm doing another YouTube channel. And so that is keeping me pretty busy, you know, pretty much seven days a week at the moment. And so every now and again, and of course this time of year also is a bit social. I actually had a social gathering on Saturday, which wiped out an entire day. I had an immensely good time, but of course that was the day that I no would normally be working. So just a couple of things here. So Tinker Different, don't forget to check that out. Great online community. If you have technical problems, you need help or something like that, check it out. Um, Steve has just released a new video about a rusted G3 all-in-one and it's apparently performing very well, which is I'm very pleased to hear. And I'm going to be checking that one out this afternoon as well. I think that's going to be good fun to watch. Um, uh, Startup Disk is full. New channel that I've set up recently with Jay and with Dana. Um, please jump on. Please have a look. Please subscribe. New episode coming out tomorrow. And the only way you're going to find out if that new episode has arrived is by subscribing and press, pressing the bell. And then you'll get a notification when that new... Uh, that new uh, episode has landed. So we're up to episode four at the moment. Our next episode will be in a couple of weeks time and we have a very special guest on that one as well. So, so again, thanks again. Thank you to everyone for watching. Thanks for keeping me company. Thanks for keeping the chat live. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button. And
whoops. Um, and, uh, and I will hopefully see you in the next live stream. So have a good one and goodbye. Yeah.